Hello, welcome to Active Bright Systems on YouTube. I'm Scott Bryant. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. This video is all about the 10 myths in the strength and conditioning field of exercise. So I see many guys getting it wrong in the gym when they're trying to gain strength and size. And number one, number one, the first myth is I can do it without having a corrective or an exercise program. If you're not tracking your rep sets, loads and tempos when you're in the gym, you don't know what success you're having in the gym and if you're not documenting it. So the, the big bodybuilders or the big athletes like uh, Luther Ringo, Dorian Yates, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all these guys have got gigantic muscle mass all documented everything. So they could see their progress and see how much they was improving in their strength and conditioning program. So it's really important that if you don't know what the hell you're doing, when it comes to program design for strength and conditioning, then you need to see something like me where I can do a thorough assessment, find out where you're strong, where you're weak, and where you're too tight, and we'll design your program in which to balance the body. So the next myth is, you need to work out like a bodybuilder. So I hear lots of guys in the gym and they go, just training triceps today and I think they're going to get mega massive triceps and then they go oh I'm just doing legs today and I think they're going to get mega massive legs and then you've got these other guys that go oh I'm just going to do it's a back, day, back and arms day today and uh, I'm going to get gigantian arms and a back. Now really fundamentally if you're in strength and conditioning Conditioning means the whole of the body, if you're looking at it from a holistic point of view, not just one part. Now, if you're taking anabolic steroids and you're a bodybuilder, then maybe doing 500 sets with your triceps might make you grow. But if you're training naturally, like myself, to get the triceps to grow will take less work but heavy weight, okay, and great program design. So if you're training for strength and conditioning, do not train like a bodybuilder, train like a strength and conditioning athlete. So you wouldn't see Linford Christie, you know, won the 100 meters so many times, just doing triceps in the gym, because it's gonna make his sprint faster. No, he's going to be doing clean and jerks and deadlifting and, and sled pulling and stuff like that in which to get his power up, okay? Does that make sense? So really important not to myth to, not to train like a bodybuilder if you're trying to get strength, speed and power. The next myth is that you need more protein, okay? So if you look at Eugene Sandow, he was doing gigantuan weight right up until his 70s. He had a ripped physique, no protein powders, no supplements, just hard, regular strength and conditioning training with kettlebells, with uh, weighted uh, big balls and stuff like that in which to get gigantuan strength, okay? So really important that you do, uh, yes, you have to have protein, but if your gut is not working, you've got a leaky gut, fungus and parasites, or you're not sleeping at night, or uh, you're eating foods that are irritating your stomach lining, it doesn't matter the amount of protein you put in, the body won't utilize it anyway. So that's really important. Oh, next one, next one is a, is a big one. Oh, I'm doing 20 reps and I'm getting strong and fast. And I'm improving in my muscle mass because I'm doing 20 reps. Now, 20 reps and 15 reps at a 1-1 you know, tempo or a 3-3 free -free tempo is very endurance. So it won't give you strength and it won't give you speed and it won't give you power. It will give you endurance. 
okay so really important for you to remember to stay away from the 15 to 20 rep zone if you want to get stronger bigger and faster okay stay out of that range but if you go on holiday and you just want to look a bit more ripped then obviously you'd go into the 15 to 20 rep zone in which to maybe help burn more body fat and maybe help your body to look a bit more ripped a bit more lean if you've gained a lot of strength and size over the winter period so that's the only time I would recommend doing high rep training Oh, next one. Oh, I'm doing 20 exercises and this is how I'm going to get my strength and size. Now, doing 20 exercises in the gym is way too much. So if you're doing, like I recently saw a client and, uh, a couple of months ago and he bought an online app. And on this online app, he was doing 20 exercises for his chest. He had no chest. He had no size. He had no definition. He had nothing there. You know, it was nearly a woman. So it's, it's a joke. So it's really important that if you're training for size for the chest, you keep the reps down to about 8 to 12 and you go all out. But if you want to go for strength, you'd bring it down to 1 to 6 or 4. I found, because I'm nearly 50 now, training in the rep zone of 4 to 6, my body loves it. And I love it too because I'm not getting too much of lactic acid build up. I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger and I feel great and my body's holding on to my muscle mass. So remember you young boys out there, when you're in your 20s and your mid 30s, it's easy to gain muscle mass unless you're a hard gainer, okay? But if you're a big guy already, gaining mass at that age is okay because your hormones are really high. But as soon as you hit 40, and 40 upwards your testosterone comes down so you have to try and trick the body into getting growth or keeping what you've got so Arnold uh, Lutheringo look at Dorian Yates he's lost all his size he still looks good because he's on to testosterone but testosterone just to balance his hormones he's not on huge amounts to gain muscle mass but you see the difference between taking drugs and not taking drugs like here that's a drug physique that's not natural okay so it's really important that you understand this philosophy and you understand that if you go to the living legends uh, uh, Instagram page uh, you will see him on there doing a 210 kilo deadlift for one to two reps but he weighs 70 kilos so that's somebody that's really 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 strong and is staying in the power zone of training okay so the next uh, myth ah, is that you need to do uh, lots of cardiovascular training. Now this has been debunked by Charles Parlequin. Charles Parlequin was a strength and conditioning coach. He's dead now. Uh, got 250 athletes to Olympic gold. And his philosophy was you don't need any cardio. Simply because the cardio system and the strength system work together, not independently. And unfortunately, in the industry today, we're all taught, oh, it's independent, but it's not. They're both together. So if you look at World's Strongest Man, they've got huge amounts of body fat, which I don't like. But you see they have good endurance and they have good speed and power because that's how they train. They train fucking really heavy for high reps, which I don't agree with to a certain degree, but they'll be doing that in different cycles before they do the competition. So then they get the endurance for the competition of uh, running with a sled or pulling a truck or running with a car. But then they'll do their power training to get their strength up to the level of lifting.